Um, that was talking about Ted, not me. Um, I can point that out. I think Ted's going to have to become my agent after that introduction. Um, listen, we've got 10 minutes. I'm Norman Stone. You have 10 minutes. So let's make it work. I want to be helpful. I want to do a bit of self-criticism and, and, uh, and scrutinize where we're going. Um, I've been working as a Christian in the secular world of film and television for about 37 years as a producer, director, writer, sometimes all two or three. Um, and you probably don't know me. I certainly don't know all of you. And if I was going into a broadcaster or a film company and they want to know if they want to employ me, I'd show them a little show reel. So I figured out of sheer honesty and courtesy, I should show you 90 seconds of what I show them. So let's roll the tape if we can. Thank you. Soon. Yes, the test of technology. Is this my is, son Robbie up there? Well, um, if that isn't possible, it is there. possible. Excellent. Here we go. It's not the clips, it's the intro. <laughs> Uh, that seemed a little violent. Um, I, um, I was going to apologize for the violence, but I think I won't because it's part of what I want to say. I mean, one of the main things I want to leave with you in seven minutes or whatever I've got left is that I think we should communicate to the world as it is, not as the world as we would like it to be in an ideal world. I always think that when Jesus told the parable of the, uh, the Good Samaritan, a man went, came forth and went from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, etc. Sometimes you'd really want him to meet nice people on that road and have a nice talk and share a sandwich. He didn't. He got beaten up. He was left for dead. And the people that Jesus was talking to, or were talking to at that time, knew that road, knew it was a rotten place, knew it was bandit ridden, and he communicated. Let's please wake up to the real world and make good movies, and I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Um, because very quickly, over many, many years of making films, and it has been, uh, and as a believing Christian, and someone who's both positive and passionate about the family, I have come to value one quality about and above all else, and that is truth. And what Ted said about story is absolutely right. But truth without story is wrong. And story without truth is wrong, rather. This is our central weapon. It's our dearest friend if we're going to do God's work in what is obviously a broken world. And I'd like to leave that with you. It's something that Christians don't seem to be very good at all the time. And there are two great tendencies that we have. Let's get honest with each other. Um, the first one, very briefly, in the so... Uh, okay, I'll call it the so-called Christian film industry. It's a strange thing. There is something called the Christian film industry... We seem to want sweetness and sentiment and safety rather than necessarily hard-edged truth all the time. Now, I, knew of, I heard something yesterday about a man who made a film in a ghetto, a really tough area. It was a tough film, but it was a good film with a great message. And a Christian distributor said, I'm sorry, I can't take that because my audience wouldn't like the setting. Now, I think we should wake up. That is not acceptable. Um, 
You don't show everything to everybody, but you've got to at least face up to the world as it is. The second great tendency we have, and this maybe strikes a little closer to home at this conference. Um, I've got a green light. Um, the second thing is beware of propaganda. Amen. You see, we are so keen, and in a way understandably so keen, to push and promote our beliefs that we can be guilty of manipulating the media, ignoring the facts, and basically trimming truth to our purposes. And that is disaster for the audience. They will sniff it a mile off. Please be truthful. What is propaganda? I think it's where the message becomes more important than the facts. And we may be accused, I think we will be accused, of bias and propaganda, but we should never be guilty of it. I'd like to leave that with you. Because only then, only then can we really earn the right to be heard. And I stress that. Earning the right to be heard will give you far more success in telling stories that move people. Yep. Christian values, marriage and family, I believe, are under attack. And if we're to counter the relentless and effective pressure that we all know about, and we've seen some amazing examples during this conference already, we must do so with truth and top-level creative uh, skill and craft. How are we under attack? Well, Ted's gives encouraging uh, reports on the on the, uh, the figures, but there is an awful lot of figures as well that say other films are still making the money. And I would quote one out of the many, 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 which I would, I've got a particular dislike of. It's called The Hangover. I don't know what it was called in Spain. Um, it was hugely popular, very well made, often quite funny, but corrosive poison to Christian values. It's about uh, people, a bunch of friends, going into Las Vegas before they get, uh, one of them gets married to a lovely lady, and of course, everything goes wrong. But what, what were they on about? They were saying, what were they saying? They were saying, you know, really it's about excess, wild excess. Do what you want, when you want, screw as many ladies as you can, and then get married. No, this is wrong. This is chaos. This is not even half-truth. It's direct untruth. But they absolutely push it in a number of num very subtle ways. And who are they selling this to? Well, I looked on their website. They're selling it to what they call R-rated youth. Uh, that was their target audience. This quite seductive um, film, our teenagers. And were they successful? Well, heck yes. They made it for a very uh, modest 35 million. And so far, they've been made nearly half a billion dollars out of this and counting. So they were successful. So how do we counter this? How do we, how do we say, that isn't just the only way to think about before you get married, guys. Um, we certainly don't do it with sentimental sweetness. We certainly don't do it with over-pushy propaganda. Not even with our own version of half-truths, which I think we can slip into if we're not careful. I think, but with, own, with the, uh, that's me off, I'm almost finished, um, with, with the, the whole truth and with great movies. Popular creativity that makes people feel so much that they can't help but think. I repeat that, feel so much that they can't help but think. Can it work? Well, yes, of course it can. Um, many of us are trying. And <laughs> in spite of having no money or very little money, we do get some successes. Chariots of Fire. Those of you who know it, about Eric Little and the Olympics, that was a tremendous um, surprise. Uh, had the whole nation and the world believing in good and right and Christian values in a strange, strange way. So listen, I've got to go. They've called me off. The world may be broken, but it does recognize truth when it sees it. Let's show them it. God bless you. Thank you.